Hey guys, how are you? Somebody asked me about getting into the source code of apps that they're using. He doesn't specify whether they're web apps or they're thick clients, you know, something you might install on Windows or Mac or something. Um, uh, Cause he says what the apps is using for the business has many glitches. And so he's asking me, is there any legal issues that I need to be aware of when considering looking or studying the source code of apps? Well, first of all, Unless the app is open source, uh, where the uh, writer of the code or the owner of the code base, if you will, unless they specifically say, here, take a look at all the source code. That's why it's called open source, because the source code is open. Many times, source code is open, so you can look at it. You have to go download it. Pro well, you have to download it, and then you can look at it. The other time, and many times it's not open source, it's closed source. So you can't get at it. So if you're using a web app like, I don't know, uh, Facebook, and you try to view the source code, what you're going to see is the web page source code. They call that the client source code. And you're not going to see all the complex stuff which is really happening behind the scenes on the server. You won't get it uh, unless you can somehow hack the servers, which I wouldn't advise you to do. So he wants to get at the source codes because he's wondering if he can inspect the source code to figure out uh, why the bugs are being caused by the software, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It, it won't happen. <laughs> it's like, you know, one of the hardest things about development is actually learning an established code base, getting in there, sort of figuring out all this stuff, especially if it's a pretty big project and if it's an old project where you have many developers who've worked on it over the years. Even if you worked on a particular project, let's say you worked on something at Apple three, four years ago, and then you leave, you come back, it's going to be very different. Um, so even if you know the code base and you haven't been in touch with it for a while, it's a very strong probability that you're going to, you're going to have some time, you're going to have to spend some time trying to, to decipher how things are working. And that's if you have full access to everything. Of course, as I teach, if you're a great programmer, your code is going to be very simple and it's going to be self-describing, meaning by looking at the code, any decent developer will be able to figure out, ah, this is what's going on. If a code base is very complex, that's usually an indicator of junior or mid-level developers. So anyway, will looking at source code help you to improve the quality of an app that you might be using? No, because A, you have to learn the source code and B, you have to get access to it. So it's actually A, you have to get access to it, and B, you have to learn it. You can hack, I suppose, to get access to it in some ways, but it's, you know, when you use a piece of software, one of the standard clauses when you tick off and say, yes, I agree to the terms, one of the standard clauses is you're not going to try and hack and reverse engineer the product. So let me leave you with this one comment. If you think that, hey, maybe I can create an improved version of this product, this piece of software that I used, so I want to get access to the source code, see what's going on. The source code is not that important, really. Uh, it, no, it isn't, because um, as I said, there's a lot of, it's, it's, a, it's a very big job a lot of times to be able to go in there and figure out what's going on in a very established old source code, that's for sure. And in fact, some companies will in time uh, start from scratch because it's just too much of a mess. It's happened to me. Studio Web 123, which is several years, many years old, many developers have worked on it. It was such a mess after all those years because different people worked on it and, and the requirements of the application would change over time. And I had to make the decision at some point to say, okay, uh, we can't work with this code base anymore. It's too brittle, it's too fragile. So we, uh, so we started from scratch with Studio Web 4 and now we're five, brand new code base. Uh, so even though I had access to all the source code and I had architected and been involved with every step of its development for years. Because of the nature of software, I, at that point, even though I had intimate knowledge, it's, eh, it's time to start from fresh. So how does this relate to getting at source code to build a better version of the app? It's not about the source code. It's about architecture. It's about implementation, meaning is the source code well architected? Uh, can you build something that makes sense uh, given the needs of the project. That's the challenging part, actually. So looking at an old piece of source code, an old code base, 
to get ideas. You don't need to do that. Um, the complexity uh, and the discovery process of modern day web development and development, for the most part, except for AI, I guess, and maybe some machine learning, well, AI machine learning, um, it's pretty much all been solved. So, you know, you know, there's no secret sauce to be had there except following best practices as I teach. If you're interested in learning more from an ancient nerdling such as myself, I've been coding since 94, check out below. I have my mentoring program. I have my psychology soft skills training program, Lizard Wizard, very popular. Uh, of course, Lizard Wizard plus everything else is in my mentoring program. I invite you to take a look. If not, you can subscribe if you liked. All right, we'll talk soon.